The 9,340th meeting of the Security Council is called to order. The provisional agenda for this meeting is maintenance of peace and security of Ukraine and threats to international peace and security. The agenda is adopted. In accordance with Rule 37 of the Council's Provisional Rules of Procedure, I invite the representatives of Latvia, Poland, and Ukraine to participate in this meeting. It is so decided. In accordance with Rule 39 of the Council's Provisional Rules of Procedure, I invite Mr. Martin Griffiths, Under Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs and Emergency Relief Coordinator, to participate in this meeting. It is so decided. The Security Council will now begin its consideration of item two of the agenda. I now give the floor to Mr. Martin Griffiths. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you for this chance to speak on this particular, particularly tragic day. We've all seen the terrifying pictures of the catastrophe unfolding in Kherson, in Ukraine as we speak. The destruction of the Khovka hydroelectric power plant dam is one of the most significant incidents of damage to civilian infrastructure since the start of the Russian invasion of Ukraine in February 2022. The sheer magnitude of the catastrophe will only become fully realized in the coming days. But it's already clear that it will have grave and far-reaching consequences for thousands of people in southern Ukraine on both sides of the front line through the loss of homes, food, safe water, and livelihoods. Mr. President, the reservoir which is formed by the dam is a lifeline in the region and a critical water source for millions of people, not only in Kherson, but also in Zaporizhia and Dnipro oblasts. Ukrainian authorities report that at least 40 settlements are already flooded or partially flooded in Kherson oblast, and this number is expected to rise in the coming days. Severe impact is also expected in areas controlled by Russian Federation where humanitarians my colleagues are still struggling to gain access. Mr. President, the UN and humanitarian organizations have already today stepped up operations to try and address the impacts of this event. An emergency response is underway to provide urgent assistance to over 16,000 affected people. And this support includes drinking water, cash assistance, and psychosocial support. And these efforts are a complement, separate from and in addition to and support to the Ukrainian government's response, which includes the sending of additional equipment like power generators, mobile water filter equipment, and transportation for water trucking, water being such a, a key issue due to this devastation. Multidisciplinary mobile teams have also been deployed to train and bus stations across the oblast to support those seeking evacuation, and cities in the West are preparing to receive those evacuees, these tragic families. Mr. President, when I last briefed this Council on the situation in Ukraine just three weeks ago, I highlighted the civilian death and suffering being caused by the conflict on both sides of the front line. I mentioned then the loss of health care, water, electricity, and heating for thousands of people and the massive numbers of those forcibly displaced. And today's news means that the plight of the people in Ukraine is set to get even worse than those pictures that we saw then. Immediate humanitarian needs are expected to grow as floodwaters move over the coming days and as assessments of the situation and the response continues. The dam is a key source of agricultural irrigation in southern Kherson and the Crimean Peninsula. The sustained flooding displayed on our screens today will disrupt farming activities, damage 
livestock and fisheries and bring widespread longer-term consequences. This is a massive blow to a food production sector, which, as we know, is already significantly damaged. We are also particularly concerned about the risks of mine and explosive ordnance contamination as fast-moving water shifts projectiles to areas previously assessed as safe, thus putting people in further and unpredictable danger. At least 30% of Ukraine's territory is mine contaminated, according to Ukrainian authorities, with Khersonska Oblast being the most affected in the country. The destruction of the dam may also, of course, negatively affect electricity generation. Additionally, any uncontrolled decrease in the water level of the reservoir may negatively affect the safety of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant downstream. Our colleagues at the IAEA are closely monitoring the situation, and as of this time, no immediate threat has been reported. The United Nations has no access to independent information on the circumstances that led to the destruction in the hydroelectric power plant and dam. Yet, international humanitarian law is very clear. Installations containing dangerous forces such as dams must receive special protection precisely because their destruction can cause severe loss for the civilian population. Constant care must be taken thus to spare civilians and civilian infrastructure throughout all types of military operations. The damage caused by the dam's destruction means that life will become intolerably harder for those already suffering from the conflict. And the consequences of not being able to deliver assistance to the millions of people affected by the flooding in these areas are potentially catastrophic and as yet unmeasured. We stand ready to do everything we can to ensure we reach all those who've been affected and need assistance, but this won't be easy nor straightforward. We're extremely concerned about people in affected areas that we are currently unable to reach. And we're operationally ready at any time to move with interagency convoys and aid personnel into Russian-controlled areas as well, and those affected by these events of the day. Mr. President, the people of Ukraine have shown extraordinary resilience. Our urgent humanitarian task is to continue to help them to survive and then to be safe and then to get a future. And we will do so in our terms, the best of our ability. And we stand ready, of course, to keep the Council abreast of any developments. Thank you very much. I thank Mr. Griffiths for his briefing. I now give the floor to council members who wish to make statements. I give the floor to the representative of the Russian Federation. Mr. President, on the night of June 6, the Kiev regime committed an unthinkable crime, exploding the dam of the Kahovka hydroelectric power plant, resulting in an uncontrolled discharge of water downstream on the Dnieper River. Settlements have been flooded, thousands of people are in need of evacuation, and that evacuation has already begun. Colossal damage has been dealt to the agriculture of the region and the ecosystem of the Dnieper estuary. I want to emphasize that the leadership of the armed forces of Ukraine had openly declared their readiness to blow up this dam to gain a military advantage as far back as last year. Here is a direct quote from an article in the Washington Post dated December 29, 2022. Listen closely. Major General Kovalchuk considered flooding the river. The Ukrainians, he said, even conducted a test strike with a high Mars launcher on one of the floodgates at the Novokahovka Dam, making three holes in the metal to see if the Dnieper's water could be raised enough to stimmy Russian crossings but not flood nearby villages. The test was a success, Kovalchuk said, but the step remained a last resort. He held off. End of quote. We have warned the international community and UN leadership about this threat, 
At the end of October 2022, we circulated as an official document of the UN Security Council a note from the permanent mission on the Kiev regime's plans to destroy the Kahovka HPP. We regret that our calls to the Secretary General to do everything possible to prevent this horrifying crime were not duly heeded. This time, the Kiev regime, sensing its full impunity and with the encouragement of its Western backers, decided to carry out its terrorist plan, convincing anyone that the Ukrainian conflict was allegedly the result of unprovoked Russian aggression is becoming increasingly difficult. Today, only the United States and their closest allies still try to deny that Ukraine's Western, pa Western pa patrons have long and purposefully been preparing Ukraine for war with Russia after the anti-constitutional Maidan coup, blasphemously ignoring the nine-year war of the Maidan authorities with their Russian-speaking population in the east and southeast of the country, a war that claimed thousands of civilian lives, and ending which was the primary purpose of Russia's special military operation in Ukraine. We are already seeing a coordinated information, or rather disinformation campaign. We are hearing statements coming from the West and, of course, from Kiev, and we will certainly hear the same thing today in this chamber, that it was Russia who blew up the Kahovska Dam. These statements are in the spirit of the same flawed logic that claims Russia sold itself at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant or blew up the Nord Stream. Such quote-unquote conclusions reek of schizophrenia and perhaps not even the latent variety. The deliberate sabotage undertaken by Kiev against a critical infrastructure facility is extremely dangerous and can essentially be classified as a warm crime or an act of terrorism. Attacks on objects containing dangerous forces are expressly prohibited by international humanitarian law, with dams specifically mentioned in Article 56 of the first additional protocol to the Geneva Conventions of 1977. The sabotage carried out by Kiev has two obvious objectives. The first is to attract maximum attention in order to create favorable opportunities for regrouping its units in order to continue the widely publicized counteroffensive, which is clearly bogged down in failing to achieve the objective set by Kiev. According to our Ministry of Defense, Kiev has begun building defensive positions on the right bank of the Dnieper River, which indicates the intention of Ukrainian forces to go on the defensive. The second goal of today's attack is to inflict maximum humanitarian damage on the populations of vast territories, which inevitably results from the destruction of a major water and energy infrastructure facility. At present, the authorities of the Kherson region of the Russian Federation are evacuating the population from flood-prone areas. The HPP dam explosion has already led to an environmental catastrophe. Dozens of settlements downstream of the Dnieper River are flooding, the Kahovka Reservoir and the North Crimean Canal, which supplies water to the Crimean Peninsula, are seeing falling levels of water. In other words, Kiev has once again set out to take revenge on Crimeans for their choice in favor of Russia and leave the population of Crimea without water. We also do not rule out an implicit attempt at a provocation involving the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. At the same time, the Kyiv authorities significantly increased the discharge of water from the Dnepropetrovsk Hydro Electric Power Station, which is leading to even greater flooding and indicates that the sabotage was planned in advance in order to cause the most severe repercussions for the population of the region. In our view, it is the criminal Kyiv regime and the Western patrons obstinately pumping it full of weapons who bear full responsibility for the unfolding tragedy. This act can be viewed as an extension of the systemic tactic used by the Kiev regime since 2014, which consists of striking purely civilian targets with the sole purpose of intimidating the civilian population. This is expressly prohibited by Article 51 of the same additional protocol. This use of terror terrorist methods has already become a calling card of the Kiev regime, which openly flaunts this, uh, these tactics. It is responsible for the explosion on the Crimean Bridge, the murders of Daria Dugin and Vladlen Tatarsky, the assassination attempt on Zahar Prolepin. The head of military intelligence of the armed forces of Ukraine, Kirill Budanov, has openly announced plans for the further terrorist destruction of Russians 
and not a word of condemnation of this, these acts has been heard from Western delegations. The Kiev regime has good teachers who are responsible, among other things, for the Nord Stream explosion and targeted attacks on the Altabga Dam in Syria. The West is accustomed to using someone else's hands to do their dirty work. But in this case, hiding behind the incompetent Kiev regime will not work. We understand perfectly well who is actually planning, preparing, and authorizing sabotage of this magnitude. We are deeply bewildered, bewildered that the UN Secretariat repeatedly fails to condemn the attacks perpetrated by the Kiev regime, citing insufficient information, as was the case, for example, with the shelling of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant by the armed forces of Ukraine, even though it is obvious to everyone from which side they are occurring. At the same time, the Secretariat's leadership does not hesitate to replicate politicized conclusions that supposedly all such crimes are as a result of Russia's actions in Ukraine. This is unacceptable deviation from the principles of objectivity and impartiality that are required of the UN Secretariat's leadership by Article 100 of the UN Charter. We call on the Secretary General to finally provide an objective assessment of the terrorist acts carried out by the Kiev regime and condemn them. We insist on fully establishing all the circumstances of the barbaric attacks on the Kahovska power plant. We cannot allow a repetition of the tragedy in Bucha or the Nord Stream explosion. Thank you. I thank the representative of the Russian Federation for their statement, and I now give the floor to the representative of Albania. Thank you, Mr. President. Let me also thank USG Griffiths for his briefing. Here we are, once more, with dreadful news coming from Ukraine. A huge hydropower electric dam in the temporary Russian-controlled part of southern Ukraine was blown up, unleashing a significant amount of water now flowing free through the dam and the hydroelectric power plant. You don't need to be a scientist to anticipate the huge consequences. The calculation of the damage or destruction of civilian property will need time, and experts warn already that it will definitely have extensive long-term ecological and env environmental negative consequences, not only for Ukraine, but also for neighboring countries and regions. And USG Griffiths already gave us an initial grim picture of that. Not to mention also that as a result, the cooling procedures of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant may be seriously affected. Colleagues, Ukraine has directly accused Russia for the destruction. We just heard Russia claiming the opposite. As the SG stated earlier this morning, the UN has not been able to independently verify the facts, but has clearly established that this is yet another catastrophic consequence of the Russian aggression in Ukraine. As we all know, there are two parallel wars going on. Russia's war of choice, that is killing civilians, committing crimes and destroying the entire country, and the propaganda war is waging, trying to fool the world through a totally biased and intentionally distorted narrative, despite, despite a serious recurrent issue of credibility. Let's look closer to it. How many times have we heard in January and February last year that Russia had no intention to attack Ukraine until it shamelessly did? How many times have we heard, including in this room, that everything happening since February 2022 is solely and entirely the fault of Ukraine, which we know it isn't. How many times have we heard that the despicable crimes committed in Bucha were staged? The UN Commission of Inquiry and other credible reports have concluded otherwise. Didn't we hear endlessly that Russia never attacked civilians, except for the 20,000 Ukrainians killed or wounded and those millions uprooted for their homes? Didn't they say that Russia had never forcefully deported children to give them for adoption in Russia? The uh, ICC and OEC Moscow mechanism have proved otherwise and reached different conclusions. The world witnessed in disbelief a room full of people laughing in New Delhi when Russian foreign minister claimed that Russia is defending itself from a war launched by, by Ukraine. 143 countries of the UN just don't buy it. The world scientific community is still waiting for proof on the biolaboratories producing combat birds and armed mosquitoes and for the spread of pathogens using migratory birds and bats. They are nowhere to be seen. Everyone remembers the high alerts issued of the, on the non-existent Ukrainian dirty bombs, and so, and so on. Therefore, the simple question we have is, why would then the destruction of, a, of the dam be otherwise when we have witnessed day and night 
that Russia has not spared anything to inflict as much as possible damage to the civilian and critical infrastructure in Ukraine? Didn't they do everything to destroy power installations last winter to leave entire cities without electricity and heating, with a deliberate intention to force the submission or freeze to death civilians, families, women and children, girls, the elderly, the disabled, everyone actually? What to say about the 2,600 schools and more than 1,250 health facilities destroyed or damaged already? Colleagues, this is not who speaks first. This is not who speaks louder. This is about truth, rules, laws, and accountability. And the international law is clear. Deliberate attacks on critical civilian infrastructure amount to war crimes. The perpetrators, directly or indirectly involved in such acts, must be held accountable. Whoever thinks that such acts, like others before it, despite their dire consequences, will affect the spirit of Ukrainians and deter them from fighting to defend and liberate their country, should think twice. Because in all this, Ukraine is right and Russia is wrong. This is why the international community will continue to help Ukraine and its people to defend themselves their freedom and their dignity. There is only one way to put an end to the consequences of this war, and that means the complete withdrawal of all Russian forces from the internationally recognized border of Ukraine and engaging in sincere talks in finding solutions through diplomacy. Anything else would be perpetuating what we have seen so far, madness. I thank you. I thank the representative of Albania for their statement. I give the floor to the representative of the United States. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, and Under Secretary General Griffiths, thank you for your briefing. Uh, today we have seen yet another tragic outcome of Russia's unprovoked full-scale invasion of Ukraine. It is deeply alarming and concerning the Kokovka Dam, a crucial hydroelectric plant on the Dnipro River, was destroyed. Its destruction has caused devastating floods and impacted the lives and livelihoods of tens of thousands of Ukrainian civilians along the river. We are in close touch with Ukrainian authorities on providing assistance to the many civilians displaced and forced to flee their homes for safety. And we will continue to work with humanitarian partners on the ground to provide assistance. We regret the Council must meet on an urgent basis to discuss the destruction of the dam, which is yet another casualty in Russia's brutal, full-scale invasion of Ukraine. I want to make absolutely clear. It was Russia that started this war. It was Russia that occupied this area of Ukraine. And it was Russian forces that took over the dam illegally last year and have been occupying ever since. To be clear, deliberate attacks on civilian objects are prohibited by the law of war. As a party to Additional Protocol 1 to the Geneva Conventions, Russia has an obligation not to attack works or installations containing, quote, dangerous forces including dams, unquote. If such an attack may cause the release of dangerous forces and severe losses among the civilian population. The international community is again confronted with the devastation, immeasurable human toll, and catastrophic damage to Ukraine's critical infrastructure caused by Russia's illegal war. The dam's destruction risks massive ecological devastation as Ukraine's already badly damaged critical infrastructure must once again absorb a devastating blow. Those downstream are under flood risk. The water supply to southern Ukraine, including Crimea, is at risk. Agricultural lands will likely also be impacted, further disrupting food production and impacting global food security. The dam's destruction undermines the stability of Ukraine's power supply and could create additional challenges to maintaining safety in and around the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. Although we understand the dam's destruction poses no immediate risk to the nuclear safety of the plant in the short term, we reiterate the IAEA Director General's call, Zaporizhia nuclear power plant's cooling pond, which draws water from the dam's reservoir, must maintain its integrity and access to water, which is essential for cooling the reactors and their spent fuel. We call on Russia to reconnect the sensors that automatically report data to Ukraine's civilian regulators and to allow the IAEA to ensure the international community has reliable information on any radioactivity around the plant. While investigations are underway, 
I will say again, the latest humanitarian, agricultural, energy, and environmental crisis would not even exist had Russia not launched its brutal war against Ukraine. Russia's full-scale invasion continues to put innocent lives at risk and decimate the infrastructure, livelihoods, and safety of the Ukrainian people. The United States will continue to work with the international community to hold Russia to account for its aggression. We will continue to support Ukraine to defend itself in the face of the Kremlin's brutality. The way forward is clear. Russia must withdraw its troops from Ukraine's internationally recognized borders. It must end this war, and it must end the untold human suffering it has wrought. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of the United States for their statement. I give the floor to the representative of the United Kingdom. Thank you, President. And I'm grateful to Under Secretary General Griffiths for his briefing. President, the destruction of the Nova Kokovka Dam is truly an abhorrent act. The United Kingdom stands in solidarity with Ukraine and the thousands of Ukrainians who are tonight evacuating their homes or facing terrible damage to their livelihoods or water supply. We stand ready to support Ukraine and all those affected by this catastrophe. And we are already working with humanitarian partners on the ground to supply aid. The UK has helped support them to pre-position supplies in case of an emergency like this. As we've heard, this act has put thousands of civilians in danger and is causing severe environmental damage to the surrounding area. Flooding threatens to contaminate water supplies and vital natural habitats. Vast swathes of agricultural land and electricity supplies are also at risk. And this in turn threatens food production and the international food trade. President, this is the latest of many tragic consequences of President Putin's war, which will bring further terrible suffering to the people of Ukraine. We have seen Russia indiscriminately attack civilians and critical civilian infrastructure time and time again in this war. If Russia proves to be responsible, it would be a new low in its conduct of this brutal war. We will continue to carefully assess the evidence in the coming days, but let me repeat what we've said throughout. Now is the time for President Putin to withdraw all his forces from Ukraine's sovereign territory and bring his war of aggression to an end. Thank you. I thank the representative of the United Kingdom for their statement, and I give the floor to the representative of Ecuador. Gracias. Thank you, Madam uh, Mr. President. I am also grateful for the urgent convening of this meeting, and I'm grateful for the briefing provided by Under Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs and Emergency Relief Coordinator, Mr. Martin Griffiths. We condemn in the very strongest terms the destruction of the Nova Kakovka Dam in the Ukrainian region of Kherson. According to the International Committee of the Red Cross, this act is one of the most significant acts of damage committed against critical infrastructure in Ukraine since the beginning of Russia's military aggression in February of 2022. The impact of this destruction is alarming given it is alarming given its environmental, economic and humanitarian consequences, large scale evacuations, the devastation wrought, the loss of homes and the impact on vital health services are to be deplored. We are also concerned about how long the impact of this devastation will, la will last on people and their livelihoods. We also deplore the fact that this act has occurred when only two weeks ago we held in this council the meeting on the protection of civilians in the context of the fifth anniversary of Resolution 2417. With more than 700 critical infrastructure facilities damaged or destroyed by the war. 
life and access to basic services continue to grow ever more precarious. That is having a particularly severe impact on women, girls and boys. We reiterate, Mr President, the pivotal importance of accountability to ensure that no attack perpetrated against civilian infrastructure goes unpunished. We recall that parties must uphold obligations emanating from international humanitarian law. And we recall the fact that dams must at all times enjoy special protection, given the risk that their are being affected supposes for the civilian population. We regret the fact that owing to the de facto provisional administrative administrative situation which is the result of the invasion and the military occupation, we are now seeing abilities to mitigate and to respond to damage in the dam zone affected. We support the appeal issued by Secretary General Antonio Guterres for safe and unfettered humanitarian access in order to facilitate a timely response. We laud the efforts undertaken by the United Nations and its humanitarian partners to provide vital assistance. This includes drinking water. We also express our appreciation for the prompt reaction seen on the part of the Director General of the IAEA. He took action to tackle the implications that this attack might have on the safety of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. And we support the Director General's determination to visit the power plant in the coming week, as he'd already planned. The purpose of this visit being to continue his efforts to present a, prevent rather a nuclear disaster. We urge the Security Council to support the Secretary General and to equip him with all t tools necessary to bolster his endeavours in crucial arenas in relation to this war. Finally, we reiterate the fact that Russia has the obligation to withdraw its occupying troops from Ukraine. Thank you very much. I thank the representative of Ecuador for their statement, and I give the floor to the representative of France. Monsieur le Président. Mr. President, I wish to thank Mr. Griffiths for his briefing. The partial destruction of the Karkovka dam, which occurred last night in the Kherson region, is a particularly serious act. The act illustrates once again the devastating consequences of the Russian aggression, in particular for Ukrainian civilian infrastructure. None of this would have occurred if Russian troops had not invaded Ukraine and if Russia had upheld the United Nations Charter. France expresses its deep concern regarding the humanitarian, environmental and economic impact of this disaster. Mass flooding is to be deplored in several tens of settlements. Thousands of Ukrainian people have had to be evacuated. France is ready to heed the calls of Ukrainian authorities for aid to be extended to those affected. The destruction of the dam further heightens risks posed to security and safety systems in the Zaporizhia plant. France expresses its full support for the efforts undertaken by the Director General of the IAEA as he strives to preserve the integrity of the Zaporizhia site. France once again calls upon Russia to completely, immediately and unconditionally withdraw its armed forces from Ukrainian territory in its entirety. That is the only way of avoiding other disasters of this variety. Russia will have to be held accountable for crimes committed in Ukraine. It will have to pay for the long-term reconstruction of Ukraine. It is for that reason that in Reykjavik, the Council of Europe heeded the appeal issued by the General Assembly and Ukraine and created a register documenting damage wrought. It is an important step. We call upon all states to join it. We will continue to stand shoulder to shoulder with the Ukrainian people in the struggle they have been waging for more than 15 months now to exercise their right to self-defence and to preserve their territorial integrity and sovereignty. I thank you. I thank the representative of France for their statement. I give the floor to the representative of Japan. Thank you, Mr. President. I also thank the U.S. Uh, Martin Griffiths for his briefing. 
We are seeing an on ongoing catastrophe at the Kahovka hydroelectric power plant. According to the United Nations, it has already caused at least 16,000 people to lose their homes with safe and clean drinking water supplies at risk for many more. The effects will likely be long lasting. We express our deepest sympathies to all those affected by this catastrophe for their loss and suffering. We take note that the IAEX assesses that there is no immediate risk to the safety of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. Nevertheless, it is particularly regrettable that this incident occurred just after we had held a discussion in this chamber on nuclear safety in Ukraine last week. Mr. President, we are seriously concerned about what is described in the uh, letter from Ukraine today to the President of the Security Council as the process of assessing the situation on the ground continues. What is clear is that this would not have happened if Russia had not launched its aggression against Ukraine in the first place. We echo the statement of the UN Secretary General today that this is another <coughs> devastating consequence of the Russian aggression against Ukraine. We once again urge Russia to stop its ongoing aggression and immediately, completely, and unconditionally withdraw its troops and military equipment from the entire internationally recognized territory of Ukraine. Russia's aggression against Ukraine constitutes a flagrant violation of international law, in particular the United Nations Charter. There must be no impunity for war crimes and other atrocities, including attacks against civilians and critical civil, civil infrastructure. Mr. President, our support for Ukraine will not waver. We are renewing our commitment to provide the financial, humanitarian, military, and diplomatic support Ukraine requires for as long as it takes. I thank you. I thank the representative of Japan for their statement, and I give the floor to the representative of Ghana. I thank you, Mr. President. I also thank the Under Secretary General, Mr. Martin Griffiths, for his statement. My delegation is deeply alarmed by emerging reports of extensive damage to the Kahovka hydropower plant and its consequential flooding of several settlements in the Gerson region. We are particularly concerned by the further disruptions to the lives of civilians in the region and those that rely on the dam for energy and water supply. We are equally concerned by the immediate and long-term ecological and economic fallout, as well as the possible risk to the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. It is important that the circumstances surrounding the damage to the dam are independently verified to prevent future occurrences and ensure accountability where necessary. We urge restraints by the parties from further actions that could risk the safety and security of other highly sensitive infrastructure which, if compromised, could bring catastrophic consequences for the people of Ukraine and beyond. We further urge the parties to comply with the obligations under international humanitarian law, requiring conflicting parties to ensure distinction, necessity, proportionality, and humanity. As we understand from the unfolding situation, many people are likely to be displaced by the flooding and therefore, we welcome the United Nations' immediate deployment of humanitarian support in coordination with the government of Ukraine, as indicated by the Secretary General. In this regard, we reiterate the call for humanitarian access to all affected settlements and communities. It is important to acknowledge that this, is unfortunate development, that this unfortunate development is taking place in the context of the Russian Federation's unjustified aggression against Ukraine, and without an end to the war, all other critical infrastructure in Ukraine remain at risk of accidental or deliberate damage. Mr. President, we re-echo the appeals for peace and the immediate cessation of hostilities by the Russian Federation's unconditional withdrawal of its troops from the internationally recognized borders of Ukraine. Finally, it is my delegation's expectation that the Council will be provided with more clarity on the situation. I thank you. I thank the representative of Ghana for their statement, and I give the floor to the representative of Gabon. Thank you, Mr. President. I also thank 
the Undersecretary General for his informative briefings. Exactly one week ago to the day, the Council met here to discuss the imminent risk to the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant following its disconnection, disconnection from the national power grid. The IAEA Director General, in his briefing to Council members, called on the warring parties to exercise restraint and de-escalate and presented the five principles for nuclear safety and security. Despite the repeated appeals from council members and the international community as a whole to end hostilities and in particular to end any military activities around and inside the nuclear power plant, fighting is ongoing and with it attacks on critical infrastructure. The the attack on the Kahovka hydroelectric dam in the Kherson region is an act that creates further uncertainty regarding the safety and security of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, which draws part of the energy used to cool its reactors from there. We commend the responsiveness of IAEA experts whose presence on the ground allowed for an immediate deployment of a team on the site of the disaster. We hope that the situation can be contained as quickly as possible in order to limit any potential risks. Mr. President, we are deeply concerned by this attack against civilian infrastructure and we fear the potential consequences that this could have on civilian populations economic activity in the region and the environment, as the USG has just eloquently described. As we meet, more than 16,000 civilians are being evacuated from affected areas. These thousands of affected people are in addition to the millions in need of humanitarian assistance. And this makes the situation even more complicated. My country reiterates that nuclear and hydroelectric power plants are civilian infrastructure protected under international humanitarian law. The warring parties must comply with the principles governing this and abstain from any attacks on critical infrastructure. We reiterate our support to the IAEA and recognize its leading role in the maintenance of the safety and security of nuclear facilities, and we call on the parties to fully cooperate with the IAEA. We reiterate our call for dialogue with a view to finding a diplomatic solution to this war, which has lasted for too long. We continue to encourage initiatives that seek to bring the parties back to the negotiating table in order to achieve peace and peaceful coexistence. Thank you. The representative of Gabon for their statement and I give the floor to the representative of Brazil. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank USG Martin Griffiths for his briefing. Brazil extends its solidarity to the people affected by the collapse of the dam at the Kharkov hydroelectric power plant. In view of the seriousness of the incident and its potential consequences, we consider evacuation efforts in the areas downstream of the Dnieper River to be a priority and urge the parties to the conflict in Ukraine to facilitate access for rescue teams and humanitarian workers. We, we express our concern about the risks that the incident poses <coughs> to the safety of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. Even though the IAEA considers that there is no immediate, immediate danger, the possibility that the rupture of the dam affects the supply of water for cooling reactors and nuclear waste is a reminder of how close we may be to a nuclear catastrophe. We encourage parties to refrain from actions that could lead to this scenario and to increase their engagement with the IAEA to ensure the safety of nuclear facilities. We also regret the environmental damage to the lower Dnieper and the surrounding area. 
the recovery of the affected region may require years of efforts. We consider it essential to investigate the incident and hold those involved accountable. More important, however, is to bear in mind that the rupture of the dam would not have occurred if Russia and Ukraine were at peace. Prolonged hostilities are likely to lead to further tragedies in the future. We echo the Secretary General's call for an end to violence, a just peace and respect for international humanitarian law. Mr. President, in recent weeks, several member states have approached the parties in attempts to engage them in the pursuit of a peaceful solution to the conflict. We hope that these initiatives will result in the resumption of dialogue and the cessation of hostilities so that reconstruction can finally begin. This is the wish of the vast majority of members of this organization. It is also in line with our obligation under the UN Charter and the needs of the civilian population of Ukraine. And I thank you. I thank the representative of Brazil for their statement, and I give the floor to the representative of Switzerland. I thank you, Mr. President. I wish to thank Under Secretary General Mr. Martin Griffiths for his briefing. Switzerland is gravely alarmed by the destruction of the Nova Kahovka Dam. The developments in recent hours further increase the burden of a population suffering from Russia's military aggression against Ukraine. The extent of the damage is still difficult to determine. However, it is already certain that we are facing, in the words of the Secretary General, a humanitarian, economic and environmental catastrophe. It deserves our full attention. The images reaching us from the city of Kherson and other towns and villages, villages along the Dnipro River are frightening. At this very moment, large-scale evacuations are underway on both sides of the front line. Thousands of people are likely to be affected. In addition to the devastating short-term consequences in southern Ukraine, we must be prepared for serious long-term consequences. Switzerland is concerned by the risks that mass flooding could pose to the environment, as well as to energy and food security, including to water supply. This event is a sad example of the links between water and the protection of civilians a link which this council has addressed in the past. Finally, the cooling system at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant could be affected. We continue to closely monitor the International Atomic Energy Agency's assessments of this matter. In this crisis situation, the priority must be to protect the civilian population. We express our full support for the prompt reaction of the United Nations and humanitarian partners who, in coordination with the Ukrainian government, are doing their utmost to provide essential aid, and in particular to guarantee the supply of drinking water. Switzerland calls for rapid and unfettered access for humanitarian aid to be guaranteed throughout Ukrainian territory. Given the urgency and gravity of the situation, we repeat that attacks on civilian infrastructure are unacceptable. They must immediately stop. Whether the Nova Kahovka Dam is considered to be a civilian facility or a military objective, it is protected under the rules of international humanitarian law. Violations of these rules cannot be tolerated. Those responsible must be identified and held to account. We also reiterate our call for full respect for international law, including the UN Charter. Moreover, we call upon Russia to immediately de-escalate the situation and to withdraw its troops from Ukrainian territory without delay. Failure to respect international law in general and international humanitarian law and human rights in particular undermines the very foundations of international security and the security of us all. We must never forget that. I thank you. I thank the representative of Switzerland for their statement. I give the floor to the representative of Malta. Thank you, President. And I also thank you, Mr. Griffiths, for his sobering briefing. Malta is seriously concerned about the latest developments and strongly condemns the attack on the Kahovka hydroelectric power plant dam. 
This is another attack against Ukrainian civilian critical infrastructure, and yet another flagrant violation of international law and, and international humanitarian law. The resulting flooding from the destruction of the dam has caused catastrophic damage. It has put at risk the lives of civilians, further aggravating the humanitarian situation in the country. As we have heard earlier today by USG Griffiths, reaching those in need of assistance will not be easy or straightforward. Thousands of people are at risk. People living in low-lying parts of the city of Kherson, less than 50 miles downstream, have been warned to evacuate as quickly as possible and seek shelter on high ground. Eight villages have been completely flooded, with more expected to flood as we speak. At least 16,000 people have lost their homes, with safe and clean drinking water supplies in jeopardy for thousands more. This attack has also brought with it irreversible environmental consequences. The river has now been contaminated with 150 tons of industrial lubricants. Furthermore, dropping water levels of the dam affect access to one of the main critical cooling sources for the reactors at Zaporizhia nuclear power plant and put at risk the proper functioning of the safety and security systems of the plant. This violates in every possible way the five principles for ensuring nuclear security and the safety of the IAEA. President, we emphasize that civilians and civilian infrastructure are not a target and must not be a target. Intentionally targeting them const constitutes a war crime. Mortar stresses is the, its determination to make sure that the perpetrators of such crimes are held accountable in line with, with international law. Accountability must be our priority, and perpetrators must know that justice will ultimately prevail. In the meantime, MOTA will continue to support all efforts to address the consequences of Russia's aggression. We once again urge Russia to immediately cease all hostilities and unconditionally, completely, and immediately withdraw all its forces and military equipment from the entire territory of Ukraine within its internationally recognized borders. We continue to express our, in our equivocal support to Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity and deplore any behavior that seeks to escalate the conflict further. I thank you. I thank the representative of Malta for their statement, and I give the floor to the representative of Mozambique. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the Presidency for promptly convening this, meet, uh, this briefing to the Council at the request of both Russian Federation and Ukraine. I thank Under Secretary General Martin Griffith for his update on this worrying situation. I acknowledge the attendance in this meeting of the permanent representative of Ukraine. Mr. President, while there are still conflicting accounts on the attribution and a portion of blame and indeed of the causes of the damage to the hydro dam, there should be no reservation in condemning it if it is confirmed that it was due to a deliberate act of sabotage. As the scramble to contain the humanitarian and ecological fallout of the damage, the sad reality is that this act, if proven deliberate and premeditated, adds another reckless dimension to the steadily escalatory trend in this conflict. It comes as there is no end in sight to the hostilities after 16 months of conflict and amidst reports of increased battlefield activity. Mozambique warns of the global repercussion of the looming environment, uh, environmental disaster particularly to populations and ecosystems in the immediate vicinity of the incident, but also to an already strained global food and grain supply chain. Mr. President, the deliberate weaponization and targeting of civilian infrastructure in times of war is a violation of international humanitarian law, as repeatedly stated by various council products and relevant international treaties, such as the Additional Protocol 1 of 1977 of the Geneva Conventions, which I quote, prohibits methods of warfare that are intended or may be expected to cause widespread, long-term, 
and severe damage to the natural environment, end of quote. Parties must know that they should be accountable for these acts. Mozambique recognized the importance of both parties calling the Council's attention to the ongoing emergency. However, we remain steadfast in our appeals at them to resume direct negotiations aimed at finding a lasting solution consistent with the UN Charter. Mozambique warned last week against the risk of misunderstandings, miscalculation, and collateral damage ever present in this conflict amongst erstwhile neighbors and brothers. In conclusion, we strongly reiterate our call for the immediate cessation of hostilities and the return to direct negotiations between the parties as a matter of urgency. I thank you. I thank the representative of Mozambique for their statement, and I give the floor to the representative of China. Mr. President, I'd like to start by thanking you for convening this emergency meeting. I also thank USG Martin Griffiths for his briefing. The protection of civilians and critical civilian facilities in armed conflict is an important principle enshrined in international humanitarian law. We express our grave concern over the destruction of the dam at the Kharkovka hydroelectric power station. We are deeply concerned about the resulting humanitarian, economic and ecological consequences. We call on all parties to the conflict to abide by the international humanitarian law and to do their utmost to protect civilians and civilian infrastructure. The collapse of the dam has caused major inundations. A great number of people are in urgent need of evacuation, and more than tens of thousands of people may face difficulties in accessing drinking water. We support the active efforts by the UN and the humanitarian agencies to assist to the best of their ability in the evacuation of the affected population, followed by further assistance. The Kharkovka Reservoir is also a major source of cooling water for the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. We note that the IEA Director General has confirmed that the incident has not yet has not yet posed any safety risk to the Zaporizhian nuclear power plant. However, the water in the reservoir continues to recede, and it may not be possible to continue pumping water to the nuclear power plant in the future. China reiterates that in the event of a nuclear disaster, no one can, st can stay immune. We call for maximum restraint, avoiding words and deeds that could escalate confrontation and lead to miscalculation and maintaining the safety and security of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. Mr. President, China is concerned about the protractedness or even further escalation of the crisis in Ukraine. What has just happened reminds us once again that anything can happen in a conflict situation. As the flames of war rage on, it will only bring about greater suffering and more disasters, creating more risks that are grave and impossible to predict. The parties concerned should submit to good sense, exercise restraint, and resume peace talks as soon as possible. The international community should spare no effort with a greater sense of urgency to create favorable conditions for promoting dialogue and negotiations and restoring peace. No party, especially countries with important influence, should fuel the fire and escalate tensions much less try to profit from expanded crises to advance their own strategic agenda. China will continue to stand on the side of peace and, alongside partners concerned, make unremitting efforts to promote peace talks and achieve a political settlement of the Ukrainian crisis. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of China for their statement. I shall now make a statement in my capacity as the representative of the United Arab Emirates. I would like to thank Under Secretary General Griffiths for his valuable briefing today.
the destruction of parts of the Kahovka hydroelectric power plant and dam has led to large-scale flooding from the reservoir with wide-ranging and serious consequences. The Nova Kahovka reservoir was so large locals referred to it as the Kahovka Sea, and it provided water for drinking, industrial activities, and agriculture. The reservoir is also the source of the water required to cool the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. The destruction of the dam has created an ecological, humanitarian, and nuclear safety risk. International humanitarian law could not be more clear about the need to protect dams in times of conflict. Like nuclear power plants, dams are afforded special protection against attack, even if there is a military objective, due to the dangerous forces contained therein and the risks to civilian populations. We further recall the fundamental principles of necessity, proportionality, and distinction, and note that the destruction of part of the dam has led to significant damage to other civilian infrastructure due to flooding. This council also reaffirmed in resolution 2417, the need to spare from harm the means of food production, such as farms, many of which have been destroyed by the flooding. All parties must comply with their obligations under international law. The destruction of the dam also increases the risk of an unimaginable nuclear accident. The Nova Kahovka Reservoir played a crucial role in cooling the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. According to the IAEA, the plant is now relying on the backup cooling pool for this critical function. Since the start of this war, the world has narrowly avoided nuclear disaster more than once. This act has only further increased the risks. As an immediate step, we encourage all parties to work with the IAEA to ensure that the cooling mechanism is functioning and that there are appropriate backup systems in place. We also urge all parties to cooperate with the IAEA to de-escalate the situation in the area of the plant and ensure its long-term safe functioning. The humanitarian consequences of the destruction of the dam are significant. Already 16,000 people, including thousands of children, are reported to have been forced to evacuate their homes, and evacuations continue, including in parts of Kherson city. These evacuations are particularly challenging for the elderly. We've heard from Under Secretary Griffiths that 40 villages are already submerged or partially submerged, with more at risk. The town of Nova Kahovka is already submerged. There are reports of water contamination and civilian water systems being damaged. The UN is providing emergency drinking water and purification tablets to affected people. Conflict and challenges to the export of Ukrainian grain have impacted global food security. Floods have damaged farmland, and there are reports that farm animals that could not be evacuated have drowned. The damage to a productive farming region puts further strain on an already challenged global food system. We call upon all parties to ensure the safety of those that have been displaced and enable humanitarian organizations to provide assistance to those impacted by the flood. The UAE reiterates that the cessation of hostilities throughout Ukraine is the only certain way to prevent further harm to the civilian population and prevent a nuclear disaster. We call for de-escalation and dialogue to drive this conflict towards a peaceful, sustainable solution in line with the UN Charter and we stand willing to support any serious efforts to this end. I resume my function as President of the Council. I now give the floor to the representative of Ukraine. Well, thank you, Mr. President. Distinguished members of the Security Council and the Secretary uh, General, I also recognize the pre the representative of Putin's terrorist regime in the permanent seat of the Soviet Union. 
My delegation requested this urgent meeting of the Security Council as this regime has detonated a bomb of mass environmental destruction, which has led to the largest man-made disaster in Europe in decades. On the night of uh, June the 6th, the Russian Federation blew up the dam of the Kakhovka hydroelectric power plant, which is located in the temporarily occupied territory of the Kherson region. This is a terrorist act against Ukrainian critical infrastructure that aims at causing as many civilian casualties and as much destruction as possible. By res resorting to scorched earth tactics, or in this case to flooded earth tactics, the Russian occupiers have effectively recognized that the captured territory does not belong to them and they are not able to hold these lands. The terrorist attack on the Kahovka HPP was previously discussed intensely at the level of the occupation forces in the Kherson region. Propagandists on Russian television and in the Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, which indicates that it was planned well in advance. The letter circulated by Putin's envoy last October was an element of this ground setting strategy. The Russian statement today has therefore been predictably deceitful. We have observed the same technique of blaming the victim for your own crimes. And there was little chance that the country which desperately denied its war crimes in Mariupol, Bucha, Izum, Zaporizhia, and BP would acknowledge responsibility for today's technological disaster. Let me note that Russia has been controlling the dam and the entire Kahovka HPP for more than a year. It is physically impossible to blow it up somehow from the outside by shelling. It was mined by the Russian occupiers and they blew it up. About to bite the dust in the front, here in the United States, Nations Security Council chamber, Russia is floundering again in the mud of lies. It speaks volumes that one week before the Kahovka HPP was blown up, on May the 30th, the Russian government adopted a decision envisaging that technical investigations would not be carried out into accidents at hazardous production facilities and hydraulic facilities that occurred as a result of, I quote, military operations, sabotage, and acts of terrorism, end of quote. The explosion of the dam of the Kahovka HPP is an act of ecological and technological terrorism. The biggest technological disaster in Europe in recent decades, and yet another example of Russia's genocide against Ukrainians. This is the Kremlin's response, response to countries calling for peace talks with the Russian Federation. Russia has just reconfirmed by its actions that it is not at all interested in the escalation of peace. It must be stopped and rendered harmless rather than appeased. And that is why Russia's defeat, a defeat that will ensure anyway, will be the most significant contribution to the security of our region and the entire world. President, the dam that the Russian Federation blew up held more than 18 million cubic meters of water. As a result of the Russian terrorist act, the upper part of the dam, which is the sixth stage of the Dnipro Cascade was partially destroyed. Notably, 11 sections of the dam out of 28 were destroyed. As of noon, New York time, there has been an increase in the water level of 3.24 meters on the Dnipro River near Kherson. According to the current scenario, the maximum extent of the flooded territory will occur within three to five days. 
the left bank of the Dnipro River coastline will suffer eight times more than the, left, than the right bank. Additionally, places such as Aleshki and Hola Pristin may end up underwater. Partial flooding may also affect Alexandrivka, Shiroka Balka, Sefiivka, Vinogradne, and other settlements. The level of water that can flood these areas may vary, and depending on the degree of dam destruction, it could reach 1.5 meters or more. Currently, the local authorities have organized the evacuation of residents from these settlements to other parts of Ukraine. On the government-controlled territory of Ukraine, 17 settlements are planned for evacuation with more than 17,000 people. On the occupied territory of the left bank, 20 settlements are subject to, evacu to evacuation with approximately 25,000 people. It is a matter of concern that the Russian occupiers do not organize the evacuation of civilians, although they withdrew their troops. We urge the United Nations, the International Committee of the Red Cross, and other international organizations to send humanitarian missions to the left bank of the Dnipro River to help local residents affected by the flooding. The Ukrainian authorities also ensure the provision of humanitarian assistance to the local population, mostly with drinking water, food, and other necessities. It is already clear that the destruction of the dam will deprive or severely worsen the water supply to Crimea, Kherson region, and significantly complicate the situation in Dnipropetrovsk and Zaporizhia regions. The reduction of the water level in the Kakhovka Reservoir will lead to a decrease in its level in all water intakes in surrounding regions. In particular, the Kakhovka Canal, which supplies water to the occupied Berdyansk and most settlements in Zaporizhia region. Due to the decrease in, in the water level in the Kakhovka Reservoir, there is also a danger of an incident at another critical infrastructure facility occupied by Russia, the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. At the same time, as of now, there is no immediate threat to Z ZNPP. The situation is complex, but under control. Distinguished colleagues, we call on the international community to re resolutely condemn the Russian terrorist attack on the Kakhovka HPP. The technological crime of the Russian Federation confirms the high relevance of the peace formula of President of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky. We call on international partners to join its implementation as soon as possible. In particular, the points on countering ecocide, nuclear and energy security. Russia will have to compensate for all the consequences of its crime for people, infrastructure, and the environment. I thank you. I thank the representative of Ukraine for their statement. I now give the floor to the representative of Latvia. Thank you, Mr. President. I am speaking on behalf of the Baltic states, Estonia, Lithuania, and my own country, Latvia. We thank USG Martin Griffiths for his briefing. Just two weeks ago, we gathered here for the annual Security Council open debate on the protection of civilians. But sadly, today we are here to condemn in the strongest possible terms another deliberate attack on civilians and civilian infrastructure by the Russian Federation, namely the destruction of the Novokakhovka Dam in the Kherson region of Ukraine. It is another piece of the chain of the war crimes committed by Russia. The Novokakhovka Dam has been under the occupation of the Russian Federation since it started the unjustified and unprovoked aggression against Ukraine. Russia has a track record of violating international humanitarian law and committing countless war crimes, including attacks against civilians and critical civilian infrastructure. Such an irresponsible and barbaric act as the destruction of Novokakhovka Dam has prompted the displacement of the thousands of civilians, 
creating another humanitarian crisis and an environmental disaster of proportions still to be fully revealed. It might be witnessing, we might be witnessing indeed an ecocide. As a direct consequence of Russia's attack today, at least 17,000 people have already lost their homes and will be many more to come. Safe and clean drinking water supplies are at risk for the whole region. Newly planted crops have been destroyed. It is the most vulnerable groups, including children, women, disabled persons and elderly, who are suffering and will continue to suffer the most from the consequences of this illegal war. This is another war crime which, we cannot, which cannot go unanswered. Attacks against civilians and critical civilian infrastructure must stop now. Mr. Chair, we are also concerned about the potential hazardous consequences to the energy security, food security and nuclear safety, which may go beyond Ukraine's borders. To quote President of Ukraine Zelensky, Russia has detonated a bomb of mass environmental destruction. This act further complicates the already dire situation at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, which is illegally occupied by Russia with complete disregard for nuclear safety concerns expressed numerous times by the international community. The destruction of the dam has led to a significant reduction in the level of the reservoir used to supply cooling water to the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. Russia must immediately return control to the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant to Ukraine, which would allow for effective crisis management efforts with full involvement of the IAEA. Against this backdrop, we commend the humanitarians who are providing the life-saving assistance to the people in need. It is crucial to maintain safe and secure humanitarian access. As it has been stated, in the statement by the High Representative Joris, Joseph Borrell and the Commissioner for Crisis Management, Janusz Lenarczyk, today, the EU is ready to provide immediate assistance to Ukrainian authorities and address any immediate, immediate needs, including food and drinking water. The Emergency Response Co Coordination Center of the European Commission is actively monitoring the situation and is in close contact with the State Emergency Service of Ukraine. Ukraine can request assistance under the EU civil protection mechanism. Dams like the Dnipro Dam in Novokakhovka are protected by the law of war and the Geneva Conventions. Destroying it, is, destroying it is considered a grave violation of Article 56 of the Additional Protocol 1 and would amount to a war crime. The international community simply must not allow the Russian Federation to cause yet another disaster with catastrophic consequences. Russia must bear responsibility for the devastating consequences for thousands of innocent civilians and civilian infrastructure. We, make to, we need to make every effort to ensure accountability. Launching the international register of damage caused by the aggression of the Russian Federation against Ukraine of the Council of Europe is a concrete step in this direction. Importantly, we need to prosecute Russia's leadership for the crime of aggression at the Special Tribunal for the Crime of Aggression. The sooner Russia realizes it has lost the war, <coughs> the better. It is a choice that Russia can make. We call on Russia today to withdraw its troops from Ukraine and stop this criminal war now. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of Latvia for their statement. I give the floor to the representative of Poland. Mr. President, allow me to start by thanking you for convening this urgent meeting, as well as Under Secretary Martin Grishis uh, for his briefing. The issue at hand of, uh, is of particular importance for Poland, a country that is an immediate neighbor of Ukraine. The consequences of the ongoing war, including humanitarian emergency and environmental disasters, affect also my country as a witness of the sufferings of the Ukrainian people and hub of international humanitarian assistance. <coughs> Poland strongly condemns the blowing up of the dam spanning at the Dnipro River in Novokakhovka. It is yet another outrageous act of Russian barbarity in the Ukrainian's occupied territories, a grave violation of basic norms of humanitarian and environmental protection law, and an apparent war crime. This act poses a direct threat to the lives of civilians living along the Dnipro banks downstream from the dam and to the operation of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. 
It also brings the prospect of an environmental disaster with unprecedented consequences of the regional scale, which will reverberate across Europe. The attack intensifies material losses and will result in further force in the displacement of the local population on a mass scale. It is a clear violation of all our efforts to, to highlight the importance of the climate and security nexus, nuclear safety, civilian protection in armed conflicts, including children and women, and the protection of the critical infrastructure. All these topics have been or are in the program of works of this Security Council in, the, in these months. Mr. President, Poland will make every effort to hold Russia accountable before the international community and to punish the perpetrators of the criminal act and will insist on through uh, relevant, relevant international institutions, institutional and legal mechanism, including humanitarian and environmental ones. As we have repeated many times in, the, in this chamber and beyond, in order to stop the various threats and risks dis, uh, discussed by this council, Russia must immediately stop the war of aggression. And Ukraine deserves every assistance needed. We call on the Security Council members and the broader international community to stand by the values and norms of international law and those lead us to the just peace. Thank you for your attention. I thank the representative of Poland for their statement. There are no more names inscribed on the list of speakers. The meeting is adjourned. <laughs>